This video has been made possible thanks to EA Creator Network. Apex Legends Season 11 has a brand new tropical map, AI Wildlife Ash from Titanfall as a new legend and the car SMG as well as a few new balance changes. I'm going to show you everything so that you can see exactly what there is to look forward to on Season 11's launch on November 2nd. We're going to start with the map. Stormpoint is the fourth battle royale map and it's Apex Legends largest map yet, 15% larger play area than World's Edge. But don't worry, there are tridents for quicker rotations and new transport cannons that allow better rotations while still giving you access to your abilities and weapons. The map has the highest escalation in any map so far too. At the south of the map, it starts at sea level and it continues to rise up to the high mountainous areas right at the very north. This means we have some really cool areas like gigantic hills and big zip lines. There are tons of POIs in this map, all of which feature different buildings and terrain, but what's great is that there are even more unnamed POIs filled with enough loot to get you started, so I feel this could be a great map for ranked. Rodney Reese was in charge of developing this map, the same man responsible for World's Edge. I feel like it's going to be a lot more fun for you all to discover it more in detail yourself, so I'll just show some of the highlights. As you can see, Stormpoint really is a very beautiful place. At the bottom of the map you have civilian style POIs like Fish Farm and The Mill, which sit right next to the beach and offer low ground and unique opportunities opportunities to loot up away from the center of the map. As you travel through the map, you get a closer look at areas dense with trees and foliage. There are many unnamed POIs in the center strip of the map. It's clear Respawn has purposely avoided placing a giant attractive POI straight in the middle of the map to stop us having another skull town or fragment situation. Go higher up the map and you reach the mountainous areas, and you really have to climb up some steep terrain to get there, or take a gravity cannon, trident, or big zipline. You have more militarized POIs here like Command Center, The Wall, High Point, and Lightning Rod. The river sections in the middle of the map slow down combat, but you can walk through it. There are also AI camps around the map. They're highlighted in red. You have prowlers and spiders. Spiders won't attack you unless you shoot their nests, whilst prowlers will attack you if you get near their nests. Eliminate a nest and you'll get crafting materials. You also get smart loot when you eliminate AI, which will essentially pick a slight upgrade to the gear your team currently has. Evo Armor will also upgrade a percentage of damage down to AI, so you can't just quickly farm red Evo Armor, but it is an effective way to level up your armor if you're struggling to find purple or blue. You know how I talked about there's no major POIs in the center strip of the map? Well, the very center of the map has something quite unique. That's probably going to make people avoid that area. It's a giant prowler camp filled with prowler nests. Land here at the start and you're definitely going to get a third party by players nearby, but land there mid-game if you really want to get a specific attachment upgrade and it could be a great place to visit. So that's an overview of the map. Now let's talk about Ash. Ash is a brand new legend that offers a variety of tools to stun enemies, track them, and also provide a repositioning tool for her team. I want to talk about the ultimate first. It's about the same distance as Wraith's portal, but it's instantly placed, and you can place it like Loba's ultimate. It's point and click. As soon as you click though, you're transported through the void. Unlike Race Portal, you cannot go back through. This means you really have to commit with your team to any specific plays you use with your portal because there's no going back. Enemy players can take the portal to chase you through too, but they can't come back either. Of course, with Wraith, you actually have to walk to your destination too, but it allows finer control and also means you can quickly turn back if something goes wrong. I think both portals have their pros and cons. Ash's passive is the next part I want to talk about. It's absolutely broken. Anytime a player is eliminated, a death box icon will appear on the map, so you can see exactly where players are fighting. This is insane for third partying and hunting fights, or more importantly in high level play, avoiding fights and positioning well. Ash will absolutely be considered in ALGS. Her teammates cannot see the death box info, so you'll need to talk to your team. What's even crazier is that you can hover over each death box to see how long ago it 
appeared. Or quickly see the brightness of the icon, the brighter, the more recent. It gets even crazier too. If you examine a death box as ash, it will ping the location of the killer. It's not a true scan, you only get a ping like you see on screen now, but this could be very good for third party fights. I'm really worried about how much Ash will dominate the meta just because of her passive, but only time will tell. I didn't get much time to test Ash's tether tactical, but if you throw it down and a player is caught in the radius, the player has two options. They can either stay in the area and maintain their movement speed, or they can move to the outside of it and their movement speed will be slowed. In concept, it's sort of like a mini horizon black hole, but not nearly as strong, and players still have visibility whilst they're inside it. As a tactical, it's kinda nuts and has a very short cooldown. Now let's talk about the car. I'll do an entire video comparing it to other SMGs, but in summary, it's a light, heavy SMG hybrid that can take both ammo and magazines from both ammo types. The fire select button will switch the ammo type. It shoots fast and has a similar recoil to the R99, but the damage is 13 per shot. I feel the recoil after the first 10 or so shots was something you're really going to need to learn, so it feels far more effective up close than longer range to me. But with some practice, who knows, it could be a beam at mid-distance too. Stay tuned tomorrow for my in-depth guide on the car and how it compares to the other SMGs. Watson got a big buff. Her cooldown for her tactical has halved, it has larger placement distance, the overall effectiveness of the fences is better, you can place them consecutively much faster too. The ult now charges shields more than two times faster, and it doesn't have a timer anymore. Instead, it has a pool of shields it can give out. It will tick down as shields are regenerated, and at about two red evo shields worth, it will be depleted. But what's great is the ultimate will still remain and provide ordnance protection for as long as it remains alive without being destroyed by another player. To balance this, Watson can only place one ultimate at a time, but being able to have it there permanently, even if its shield regeneration stops after a while, is pretty incredible. Unfortunately, Watson's hitbox has been nerfed in the same way Wraiths and Lifelines have recently too. The EVA 8 and Alstar got a nerf, you probably already saw details in the patch notes, and the Mastiff and Repeater got a new hop-up that allows you to reload two bullets at once. I imagine this will really allow some clutch plays when you're down on your last bit of health, but manage to chuck in two bullets and throw it at your enemy's face. This may not seem like much for balancing, and besides the Watson buff, it really isn't. I may have missed some details, as I haven't seen the patch notes myself yet, but the devs mentioned they feel things are in a pretty good state right now, and they don't want to keep making more balance changes just for the sake of it. Oh, the scout did come to the care package though, and the triple tick is now on the ground, and to sort of stop the longbow because Coming a menace with the scout now being out of the picture, the damage has been reduced back to 55 per shot. So there we have it, that is a sort of quick overview of Apex Legends Escape, or Season 11, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to be posting tons of short clips on my second channel, and more and more videos each day on this channel too, with a fun gameplay video where I get my first win on the new map later tonight. So make sure to sub, and I'll see you all in the comments. Cheerio!